So I was listening to the most recent late night Linux podcast. If you guys haven't subscribed to that podcast, you definitely need to. It's it's awesome. But on the most recent version, they were talking about predicting where Linux is going to be in the next 10 years because they've been podcasting for 10 years and they wanted to kind of look forward for the next 10 years. And one of the things that they talked about is something called composable distros. And I had no clue what a composable distro was. Like, is this something that I missed? Well, what's going on here? Now, I tend to pay attention to Linux news. I watch Nick's podcast or listen to Li Nick's podcast about Linux news, and I've never actually heard the word composable distro anywhere. So what the hell is a composable distro? So I looked it up, and there is actually a definition of, of a composable distro, and we're going to take a look at it actually right now. Now, this comes from something called Webany. I'm not sure where, you know, what this actually is. And I found the same definition other places. So this is fairly on the up and up. But what they say is what a composable architecture is at its core, composable architecture is an approach to designing and building applications by assembling independent, self-contained, interchangeable components. Each component serves a specific purpose and has a well and has well-defined boundaries. That's what composable means. Now. If this sounds familiar to you, you're not alone. Because, goodness gracious, doesn't that sound exactly like immutable to you? Now, the definitions are different. Immutable just means unchanging and stuff like that. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with containerization. But, when we were talking all the last three or four years about immutable distros, the whole idea was that things were containerized, right? The bottom level of the operating system was containerized and it was separate from user space and all this stuff. That was what immutable distros were. We've called them immutable distros for a very long time and now we're calling them composable distros. And I don't really care what we call things, right? It really doesn't ma matter what we call things, although I will note that free and open source developers, whether it be it they Linux distro developers or application developers, they all almost universally are horrible at naming things. Like, almost universally, they're bad at naming things. I don't know that I'm any different in that regard, but I'm not a developer, so it doesn't... Who cares what I call things, right? But uh, people who actually put products out there for people to use, usually, a lot of times, if they're open source developers, they don't know how to name things very well. There are obviously some, some exceptions, but that's beside the point. In this case, I don't care that they change the name and that we're not going to use Immutable anymore. I don't care that we're not going to do that, but it does confuse things just a little bit because I can't be the only one who wonders what a composable distro is I, because I never heard that term before. When did we ch when when did we decide that we're going to change the name? I'm assuming that it was probably around the time that Fedora decides that they were going to change all the names for all the things. They no longer use spins. They no longer have Kino White and Silver Blue. Instead, they have other things that I don't even know what they're called. To be honest with you, I've forgotten the names because I just assume that in a couple years they're probably going to change the names again. And why bother learning something that's going to change? And so my whole point of making this very short, hopefully, video about this whole topic isn't to define composable, although I hope I've done a fairly, you know, decent job of kind of telling you what it is, but just to say that Linux has a marketing problem when it comes to this stuff, right? We get used to calling something one thing and then we you know, like, yeah, that's not really an accurate thing to call it. And because we're nerds, we want to be as accurate as possible. So we changed the name to be more accurate. So I suppose composable is a more accurate descriptor of what's happening when you have an immutable type distro because things are containerized and separate and they have different components that each have their own way of doing things or things that they need to do and they all work together in harmony and all this stuff, right? I suppose that's a better thing to call it, but because we all got used to using the term immutable distro and then we changed it to composable, it's a little confusing. It can be confusing and overwhelming and for people who are trying to get a hang or a handle on what all this stuff means, changing the names isn't going to help. Right. Immutable distros were already confusing enough. All you have to do is go back and look in the video archive of my, of myself, uh, you know, and, and several other YouTubers trying to explain what an immutable distro is. And all of us have a slightly different way of explaining it. And who knows who's actually right. I'm assuming that you can go watch like George Castro. He's probably closer to being right than anybody else. But, you know, everyone describes these things and they're already hard to describe. And then we change the names and change what they are. And it's constantly shifting underneath us. What are we all supposed to know what's real, right? It's like the Matrix. 
it's a little frustrating is what I'm trying to get at. And here's the thing. And this is something that I've been arguing for a little while, but I don't think that I've put it out there too often. No matter what we call it, immutable or composable, this new future of Linux is super confusing. And as of right now, it still very much feels like something that only developers really want. And not necessarily because new users don't want those things, it's because they don't understand what these things actually are. You have to be pretty well versed in what the benefits are before you even kind of even know these things either exist or why they exist or if you should use them, right? So when it comes to composable distros, if that's what we're going to call them, trying to persuade us that this is the future of Linux is going to be a lot harder until someone comes forward and says, this is what it does for regular Joe Smo on the street, who's just a regular Linux user, spends most of his time in his browser. Maybe he does a little bit of audio recording or note taking or writes an obsidian or whatever. Just regular person doesn't do any coding, doesn't do anything extravagant like kernel development or anything like that. Just regular person who's on the street that uses Linux, what's good about this for them? And until that question can be answered in a way that makes sense and isn't going to change two days from now, this may be the future of Linux, but it's definitely not a future for regular people anytime soon because you can't promote the future of something and not be able to explain why that future is going to be good if you want people to adopt it. So I have some issues with all this stuff. And I've talked about, you know, I thought I had my head wrapped around immutable distros and I thought, you know, and I think I still kind of do like Fedora, Silver Blue or Kino 8 or whatever the hell they're calling them these days. You know, I think I understand, you know, the way they use them. I've used them before and I understand some of the merits behind them. But it's hard for me, who's mostly a noob and doesn't actually use any of those as my daily drivers, to explain to anyone else why they should use them, right? What makes them good? What makes them something that you should eschew normal distros to have a ton of support for them? And I can't answer those questions yet. And I think until we can, the whole future of Linux thing is going to be keep shoving down the you know, the path the, the, down the timeline, I should say, until we can actually answer those questions. So just a short rambly video, not really much of a point to it, I suppose, other than for an old man to sit here and complain that they change things again. Stop changing things. I just want things to be the same. Get off my lawn. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, any thoughts on this? You can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also, if you want to support me and get some cool merch in return, you can head on over to the shop, which is available at shop.linuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of merch, including hats, t-shirts, hoodies, desk mats, all sorts of stuff. All the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So I really appreciate everyone who has gone over there and supported me with buying something from the shop shop at the linuxcast.org thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very 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 much for your support i truly do appreciate it. you guys are awesome thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time